what is up? My name is Liz and welcome to another video of my YouTube channel. As you can already tell by the title of this video, today I have quite the story planned for you guys. Today I thought that I would share with you guys the story of my haunted childhood home. Yes, I lived in a house that was haunted. If you guys watched my Q&A video, you, then you know that I lived in a house that was haunted and I promised that I would let you guys in on that and tell you guys a story about it. By giving you guys a little sneak peek at what kind of things I liked in the Q&A video and who I am personally, I thought that I would give you guys even farther insight by letting you guys into my life as a 7th grader in a haunted house. And there are a lot of points in this story like I can tell you guys for sure that there is so many viewpoints there's my brothers there's my mom's and there's my sister so let's get started so I moved into this house at the age of 13 years old everything seemed fine nothing was going on and then there was like maybe a couple of months into the house that we started to notice weird things we started to feel kind of odd in this house. We started feeling like there was something really dark. It was like we started feeling unsafe inside our own home. We didn't know what was going on. My sister would sleepwalk, which she never does by the way. Like now that we're away from that house, she does not sleepwalk at all. And it's crazy. Honestly, after watching The Conjuring, I kind of think they have the right idea for a person sleepwalking randomly. There's this one story that she told me. We had a bunk bed. She said that it was very weird that I would do weird things in my sleep. I, I still cannot even fathom it, honestly. I really cannot. She told me that in the middle of my sleep, I would call out to someone. Didn't even know who. Just talk randomly. She couldn't even figure out what I was saying. I was talking gibberish, talking to someone. And one night, she opened her eyes from her sleep because she felt like somebody was watching watching her and she found me upside down staring at her. I used to sleep on the top and she slept at the bottom and I was like hanging down my hair all down and, and I was watching her sleep. So there's that story about this room and then eventually my family ended up building a room for my brother and I ended up taking his. This is where it gets very very interesting. So when he used to sleep in that room, he would say that he would hear people grabbing his doorknob and like trying to go in and when none of us were there like to do it. We just decided to like keep ignoring it for a second. Like every time that something happened, we would ignore it because we knew in the back of our heads what was going on. And we just didn't wanna face it. We didn't wanna understand it. We didn't want to accept it at all. There was no way we were gonna accept what was going on in our house. So it progresses like small little things, you know? Things moving from place to place and then it moved from, from like little sounds to actual po poltergeist activity where sometimes we wouldn't even see it, we wouldn't even hear it. Oh my god, the amount of phone calls that I can tell you guys that happened to this house where we would hear god knows what was insane. Honestly, telling you guys and reliving the story is crazy for me. I thought I would never have to go back to it. And now I'm going back to it in memory. I'm telling you guys this story scattered all over the place because I don't remember the exact timeline of what was going on. It started getting worse, the phone calls. The phone calls started everything. I had those flip phones that you could type in that had the entire keyboard and then close it. My mom called me on the phone once and like I was talking to her, I was wondering what we were gonna get to eat, what we were gonna eat that day. And right as I was about to hang up, I heard a whisper on the phone that said, don't let them. And then I cut it off by accident because I was ending the phone call. And then it hit me. I was like, what the hell did I just hear? So I recalled my mom and I was like, what is going on? Have you been seeing anything? Have you been hearing anything in the house? Are you okay? And then she's all like, yeah, why? And I was like, I heard a voice that told me to not let them. And I don't know what she's talking about. And then she told me, it was a girl, by the way. The voice was a girl. It always appeared as a girl, you guys always did so i told my mom like i told my mom that and she's all like well i've been seeing shadows all around me since the morning they've been all around and i just heard a little girl walk into the garage like i saw the little shoes like the bottom of the shoes she only saw the socks and the white shoes of a little girl running to the freaking garage because the kitchen door is right next to the entrance to the garage so 
she just saw that and she she didn't want to freak anybody out but when she told me i was like i heard a little girl like what are you talking about and so i think I got I kind of got a feeling that she was trying to communicate but I didn't know what she wanted She got very aggressive as the years went on where I had moved into the new room my brother's old room And I would wake up in the middle of the night I could not sleep in that room and I can tell you guys the amount of times that I woke up in the middle of that room Not being able to even turn off the light to my own room because I was terrified my entire family was terrified. We left the hallway lights on all the time. I know it's terrible. It's terrible, but we were so terrified. Not even a night light could work for us. We had to leave the lights on at night to sleep because we couldn't handle it. It was the feeling of danger in that house was getting worse by the minute. So I was in my room asleep with the door open and everything. I woke up and I felt this presence entering the hallway on the other side of the wall. And I heard footsteps in the hallway and they stopped right before getting to the door opening where I would be able to see. And I was terrified, like frozen in fear, completely scared out of my mind. And I, was, I couldn't go back to sleep after that. I couldn't at all. So I was waiting to see somebody walk past the doorway because my door was open so I could see who it was. So it got in front of my room and stopped right in front of the wall in my hallway. And it stayed there for a long time. And when I mean a long time, I mean hours. That night was torment for me. I could not sleep at all. It was there and I felt it there and I like I knew something was there and it was not the little girl that people were talking about. It was something darker, something scarier that really, really, really felt horrible to me. So so I just waited there for something to happen to me. I accepted my death at that moment. I was like, okay, I'm about to die here. <laughs> Whatever, fine, I'll die. This happened all over the, the span of several years. So I waited and then I started hearing dishes in the kitchen, which I have a window in front where I can see into the kitchen. I saw dishes falling onto the floor and moving and oh my God, when I tell you guys that this was real, it was moving. The dishes were moving on their own. I was not dreaming, I was not having a nightmare. I was awake, I was fully awake and conscious and i was extremely terrified that night i couldn't sleep at all i couldn't even get out of bed i couldn't move and i started crying and i stayed there until morning and then i told my parents and they started they obviously freaked out they like told me close the door to your room and you'll be fine but when i started closing the door to my room um i had a mirror that faced me while i slept we always had this thing about mirrors it was a huge problem so i saw a face on that mirror one morning when I woke up and it was like plastered onto it like it was like not an actual like a spirit appearance there it was like somebody drew that face on the mirror while I was asleep long story short we got rid of the mirror because we were like hell no I ain't about to deal with that so we got rid of the mirror and things got worse for my sister for my mom and for myself my sister would hear voices she would feel things also they would follow us everywhere it followed us from like in the car it followed us to school it followed us everywhere it started following us all over the place my mom would see the shadows there was this one instance where it was not just me my mom and my sister it was also a cousin of mine that actually witnessed this and i think it was on new year's eve or christmas eve no i think it was new year's eve where we were getting ready in my parents' room. We could see the, the bathroom. We had the light of the bathroom on and it was just us women. It was like my cousin, me, my sister, and my mom that was there. Everybody else had left to get food and stuff like that for the party and you're not gonna believe it. Literally, we were just ironing, doing everything, fixing everything up. We were almost done and then the light to the bathroom turns off and we can literally hear it and see the light turn off. My cousin, my sister, and everybody freaked out. Like we all freaked out and my cousin and my sister went to the farthest corner of the room and they stayed there. <laughs> my mom also freaked out too and she was like, go check it out. And I'm like, why me? <laughs> what is it? Always have to be me. <laughs> so I went to check it out and there was nothing there. Obviously there was nothing there, but the light turned off on its own. We all witnessed it, we all saw the light turn off. The light switch was pushed down, everything. And then there was one of my brother, which is the craziest one of all. And my brother had his new room in the garage. We had built like this little hallway that went to the garage and it gave him a big room for himself. When... 
crazy stuff is happening around my house now, you guys. Like, I'm telling you that every time that we would talk about this, it went crazy. Stuff would happen again and again and again. So, who knows? If I'm haunted later on, I will make sure to tell you guys about it. So, my brother was sleeping in this room. At night, it gets really, really dark in there. Like, you can't see a thing aside from, like, the light of his hallway because his hallway was separate from ours and if he were to leave it on he would be able to barely see anything inside his room so his room was dark at night we all slept with our hair tied up and my brother like the next morning one morning he just says he wakes up and he's all like which one of you was in my room last night and you better tell me the truth we were all super thrown off thrown off by it we were like what are you talking about nobody was in your room last night we were all sleeping and completely gone and he said one of you was in my room who was it and uh, we were like no that was not true so he told us which one of you sleeps with your hair down we all had our hair up and we were like what are you talking about we sleep with our hair up like tied up we don't like sleeping with our hair down. It's annoying. So he started freaking out and told us that he saw this woman had walked into his room and woke him up because she was looking into his things. Like she was throwing his things around and she was moving them around. And he was very sleepy so he thought it was one of us and he called out to this woman and he said, what are you doing? While he was in bed. He could see from the light from the hallway but he couldn't see anything else. So the woman turns around slowly. She walks up to him, to the side of his bed, and just stares at him. I'm not making this up, I swear. If I told you guys, I'm not making this up. She stared at him for a long time. This is all him telling us this. She stood there and she stared at him for what seemed like forever. That's what he told, told us. And he said that he thought it was one of us because she had like long hair and a sleeping gown. So she w slowly walks up to him to the side of his bed and she just stares at him. He was about to reach to his phone to go and light her face up, but then he realized he's all like, okay, this is weird and this is not anybody that I know. So he turned himself around and slept facing the wall while the woman looked at him while he slept. I know. When I tell you my brother had it bad, it's because he had it bad. <laughs> So that was one night. For him, it was crazy nights like that. Then one night, he wakes up again, same woman, and he hears a woman crying outside of his room. And he goes to check it out. He's freaked out by it. And then out of nowhere, right out of the blue, he just hears this gut-wrenching, horrible scream that sounded like somebody was killing a woman. And he heard it so loud, he couldn't sleep after that. It was so loud, like it was like right next to him. But it wasn't because he was alone in his room. So we started searching into the house and we never found anything. We didn't know if anybody had been killed in that house. We didn't know if an accident had happened or if a woman had died in that house. Nothing. We knew nothing about that woman. Fast forward to the final days where we were done. We were exhausted. Stuff was going on all over the place. We were like my mom was getting phone calls and hearing voices and lights were turning on and off. Dishes were moving, my family was seeing things, we were hearing, we were feeling like a bunch of things were going on there, like it was getting even worse to live in there. So my parents, they were so tired that they decided that we were going to move because we wanted to run away from that place. Run far away from that place as possible and get away from that woman, that girl, woman, whatever she was, she always appeared as a woman and we just wanted to run. So when we finally did, it was like she started getting more angry at the fact that she had gotten used to living with us and she was not anymore you know like when i tell you guys that her activity started getting stronger by the point where it was just small things at first when we finally moved well not finally moved we were like moving already it was cleaning we were cleaning the house it started getting more aggressive as we were about to leave so my sister was cleaning in the room like in the kitchen she was washing dishes so that we could move them to the other house and then she was packing them too she was washing them and packing them and she turns around because she feels like somebody is watching her so in the window of the kitchen she sees this head pop out she sees a girl high, like a girl's eye and then she sees it move away really quickly like when she runs and she thinks that it was me and she's like Elizabeth what the hell are you doing why are you trying to scare me like that and she was so mad and I was like what are you talking about? Like, I was literally in the garage. I was on the other side of the house at the time that she blamed me for this. And I was, she was all like, please tell me that it was you trying to scare me. And 
She said, I told her that it wasn't me, that I literally did not do anything. And she started freaking out and we realized that it was a good idea that we had decided to leave. But as we were turning off the lights and as we were walking out, the presence got worse. It got dark. It was like none of us could handle being in the house anymore. She had gotten mad. Whatever the spirit, whatever she wanted, she was pissed. She was mad because we were leaving her and she was used to us. We were about to turn our lights off. We felt the anger, the sadness, the just a really dark feeling right before we were leaving. I know it seems like it may not be a big deal. Like the things that I went through, that my family went through were not that big. But you would have to have lived it to understand how bad it is and how it can take a toll on somebody's energy, somebody's being. It was like it moved from time to time to us and like we had not gotten rid of anything. Uh, when I tell you guys that whatever it was in that old house probably might have followed us, it's true. And I have several witnesses to account for it. They can say this, it is real and not so entirely sure we have gotten rid of it yet. But yeah, I hope I didn't tell this story so scary to the point where you guys will have nightmares because I know I might later on, but take care of yourselves, guys. Anyways, you guys, that was the end of the story that I got for you guys and the end of this video. So if you like this video and you would like to see more content like this, make sure to give it a thumbs up and comment down below what places you think I should go if you want me to go visit haunted places because I actually kind of do. Following the hunt is kind of my thing. So let me know. Comment down below what do you, where you guys want me to go and I will see you guys next time. Bye!